Here we are on day three of the mud work. So day one, we did all of our tape joints. Day two, we did our inside and outside corners and we took care of our butt joints. Day three, now it's time to take care of all the horizontals. So first of all, we have to get rid of all these ridges that are left over from day two. Okay, this is all I do. You don't need to sand. Now we're ready to mud. So we're gonna take our mud on our 10 inch trowel, slap it on, put an angle on it, put pressure on the bottom. So we're constantly forcing the mud up. Don't do anything special around those plugins and switches. Just keep on filling, all right? Now, if you do it that way, it's not gonna end up all over the floor. Okay, right over your butt joint. And we're just cleaning this out, right? You know, at the top, we wanna to be able to see our paper. We don't wanna to use too much mud. Okay. Now we're gonna come back the other way and finish towards what's finished. Top and bottom, pressure along the middle. We're not just throwing a bunch of mud on the wall. We're trying to fill from here to here and make it smooth. Pressure across the top, pressure across the bottom. Very, very important. If you have a huge job like a basement to do and you start day three of taping with your horizontals, you can come back near the end of the day and hit your butt joints again, but don't do it until this mud is dried up, okay? Give it a few hours to set up and get stiff because the last thing you want to do is start coming down here and putting grooves in that finish coat. That would be a no-no, all right? On your third day of working in your basement, you want to do the rest of your inside corners. Now you'll see here, this mud is actually still wet. You can see the dark line, all right? We don't want to be doing that one, but the ceiling looks perfect. So that's why you want to do your inside corners as, as soon as you can get to it, because sometimes they take an extra day to dry up. Especially in a basement, you're below grade, there's not as much place for the moisture to go because it's on a vapor barrier wall. So the only place that the moisture can go is back into the room, where a lot of these interior walls, the moisture can go from the drywall in both directions. So they tend to dry faster. So we'll get up here. It's a little bit of a cramped space, but I want to be able to see what I'm doing. Again, before we get started, we'll just put the knife across, make sure we don't have any ridges or bumps or chunks of mud that are in our way. All right, working from the side of the knife, we wanna just put the mud up towards the ceiling. And the reason we wanna wait until it's dry is because we're using the, the surface here as our edge. It's gonna guide us. So now we're gonna come back with our knife and we're gonna go like this. And you're gonna see a little bit of a ridge line here that happens. Come back the other way and we're gonna clean out a groove again, just like we did the first time. And then, let me just start right in my corner, make this pretty. Always take time in your corners and make them pretty. There we go. We're gonna run this across. I'm starting to get a bit of a snow plow. I'll come by again, clean it up. Now I'm gonna to finish towards what's finished. Oh. Uh-oh, see that little bit of a ridge there is because the mud isn't quite dry enough. I'm gonna be real gentle with this. Okay, so we have did our 45 minute mud. Now it's hard. It doesn't have to be dry, just hard. And we're gonna finish it with our finished mud. And this is the one that we got a little bit wetter than our other coat. Okay, so we're just gonna put it on pretty liberal here. Here we go, right up to the top. Lay it in, give it a jiggle. All right, folks. So it's the end of day three. Our horizontals are all drying up real nice, so now we're ready to hit the butt joints before we walk out the door. We're just gonna take our knife, scratch down the side, hit the bottom. Make sure all the junk is out of the way. Make sure your knife is nice and clean. Load it up, all right? Now, we've already filled from here. You can see the ridge. That's where we filled to, right? So what we want to do now is fill from there even further. All right, put a nice healthy whack of mud in that line, okay? That stretches the joint out. Then you go one more over the middle. Now, this one's a little bit different. 
because the last time we started from the outside with pressure working to the middle. This time we're going to start from the middle working outside. All right, so again, lots of pressure here. We don't want to make the joint any thicker than it already is. And now we're going to go with the outside pressure. We're basically working off that ridge. Okay, and then one more time, a little further up. And we just want to clean up down here because we don't want to have a bunch of mud where our baseboards are going. Again, outward pressure. Come at it from both directions. Get rid of all that extra mud. Now your butt joint is really filled and really stretched. If you see junk in the mud, get rid of it. You don't want to have it there making grooves. All right, so by the end of your third day of doing mud, you've got your taping, you've done your inside corners, you've done your butt joints, you've done your horizontals, you've done your outside corners, your paper, your metal, your filler, your finished coat. Hopefully, if things have dried well, you've done your inside corners on the other side, and you've hit your screw holes two times, maybe three. You've had a chance to go around and find imperfections, fill them up with tape, repair anything that needs to be repaired, and all that's left now is the finished coat. <sighs> Wow, that's a lot of work. <laughs> if you're enjoying these videos, subscribe to the channel, hit the like button, but most importantly, comment on the videos. By all means, or a suggestion of video you'd like to see, let us know. We'd love to be in touch.